Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Pierre Fords of Kindness. How you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I make a stitched, modified sonic armor. Okay, and I'll show you what I've got. Here's the here's one I did, and it's just simply got a center stitch running down it. This would be blackish. Blackish gray, that's the name of the color, and burgundy. Okay, now here's one. This one is solid black, and it has imperial red, both that center stitch and a little side stitch. Okay, the one we're going to be working on today has got a two-tone stitch. This would be kind of my signature colors. Um, olive drab with the maroon stitch and a gold on the sides. Right? Now, this is a really, really good bracelet. It's not really hard to make either. There is one thing, I'll say this, there's one thing that's slightly different. It, if anybody has watched the latest video I uploaded, um, what is it? How to set up a four strand core with an offset working end, right? This bracelet uses that offset working end, okay? But, with all that said, if you want to see how I do this, and you want to get all the tips and tricks and commentary that I'm known for, stick around because we'll get right into it. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm set up. I'm ready to go. But let me get a few housekeeping type things out of the way, as I always do. Um, first off, I'll say this at the beginning of this video, like I say at the beginning of many of my videos. I am not a filmmaker. Don't have the best equipment. The lighting's not great. Camera won't stay in focus, and I can't seem to stay in frame for fall. But for all that, I apologize. But what I know how to do is make a pair of bracelet. And that's what I do in these videos. Um, I don't only, only tell you over here, under there, pull tight. I try to tell you over here, under there, pull it this direction and this tight. Does that make sense? I give you tips, tricks, commentary from what I've learned and my struggles and the mistakes I've made. And I try to share that with you so we can all learn. So you won't make the mistakes I have and you can produce a better product. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see. Um, what would be next? Oh, shameless plug. I always... Try to throw in a shameless plug. This is also another. Uh, this is a Cetus weave. This is a. Hey, it's labeled as a side step variation too. Now I've done the little center stitch on it. See bad lighting. Like I say, see the shadow line right there. I apologize for that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get all these shadows out of here. But there's. I'll leave the link to the tutorial for this. I've got it labeled, I think, as a modified side or stitched modified side step. Just for anybody who's curious, this is black. The green multicolored is decay, and I've stitched it in acid purple. I'll leave a link to this in the cards and in the description below. Okay, the other one. This is a stitched modified trilobite, black. Imperial Red, and the accent color in the middle is Imperial Red and Black Shockwave. And again, I'll leave this, the link for this in the description and in the cards. Okay, now, we got all that out of the way. Let's see. Um, let's give credit, excuse me, let's give credit where credit is due. This weave, I found in two places. One is on the Cetus Weaving Instagram page. I will leave a link for that, for this sp specific pictorial in the description. But, <coughs> it can also be found in the Cetus 550 book, Live Paracord Volume 1, and this one can be found on page 87. Okay, there we go. There's all that information. Now, normally, I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to kind of change up the way I do these videos. Normally, I would give you a whole bunch of specifications. Length of cord, this, that, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do that. There seemed to be some confusion. I'm going to simply tell you this. 
Look in the description below. That's where all that information is. I normally would just give you all that information and I would tell you, not necessarily what I'm going to say, look to the description because that's where all the amended numbers will be. Right? So, there's, so to alleviate any confusion, I'm not going to give you any numbers. Look in the description. That's where all the information is. Read the description. You know, I, we all know this, but we don't all do this. When all else failed, read the instructions, if you will. <laughs> it makes sense. Okay, now, I will say this, though. Um, I'll say this one. Two things. Well, I don't know. Just, just let me talk for a second. Um, you know, maybe I like to talk. I try to, I try to teach, try to give some, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, my add to, I'll, I'll throw this one in there. Just so we understand this. Cause I know when I first come into doing all this, this is something that I didn't quite understand. So I'll explain this briefly. Most of you may know this, but there might be some who don't know this. Um, when you make one of these bracelets, you take a wrist measurement, a wrist measurement, not the measurement you want the bracelet to be, or you think the bracelet should be, you measure the wrist with a cloth seamstress type measuring tape, snug, no slack in it, but not cutting off your circulation. That's a wrist measurement. Okay. We take the wrist measurement and we have to add to that in order to get our jig measurement. Why? Because if you make a, if you measure your jig out, the same measurement you get for your wrist, it will not fit. It will be too small. Why? You have to take into account the thickness of the bracelet. The thicker the bracelet, the more you have to add to that wrist measurement. Hence why I call that variable, which depends on the thickness of the bracelet, the add to measurement. Does that make sense? So basically, you have a wrist measurement plus the add to, and that's what gives you your jig measurement. Now, when you measure your jig, you measure in between the connection points. You have a, the way I've got mine set up, it's always like this. The female end is at the, at the very top, then the male end, which is attached to the bracelet. Where those two connect, you measure from that point to the connection point at the bottom between the male and the female end. That's your jig measurement. And always measure with an independent device. Don't use this down here. That's not what this is for. They put that on there. I don't know, to make it look good or whatever. I use these for a different purpose. Not measuring this out, right? And so many people, that throws them off. They think, no, don't use that. Because these will not line up with the buckle. Say you use, one time you use a short, uh, you know, like a three-eighths buckle, and the next time you use a one-inch buckle. This is not going to help. Always use an independent measuring device. Does that make sense? And like they say in carpentry, measure twice and cut once. Measure this thing over and over. Make sure it's right before you start. Okay, now, <laughs> I know, what it, but there's some people who don't realize that. They, I, I, I had a conversation with somebody. I've had this conversation with quite a few people, but I had a conversation the other day with somebody, and I was making them a bracelet. And he, and this man, he makes these things, and he, after I explained to him, it made sense. He's like, oh, I see what you're talking about. I see why now. But I was telling him, I said, give me your wrist measurement. And he said, uh, and he said well, I'm going to take a bracelet and measure it. And I said, no, we'll stop right there. I said, I don't want a bracelet measurement. I said, that's not what I asked for. I asked for a wrist measurement. I said, you give me that wrist measurement. I said, I'll do all the calculations on my end. But so many people, they get that confused. And I know when I started selling these things, there was some confusion. I would ask the customer, give me a wrist measurement. And that they wouldn't give me a wrist measurement. They'd give me what the measurement that they, the bracelet should be or what they wanted the bracelet to be. And that would always lead to, because I would take that wrist measurement plus the add to and get a jig measurement, and they would end up getting a bracelet that was way too big. And they're like, why? I said, well, did you give me a wrist measurement? And I explained to them, and they said, oh, no. I'm like, 
exactly. So that's why I clarify that. Anyway, I know I'm 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 kind of rambling. I got one on my soapbox, but I'll leave that one alone. Okay, next thing. Um, this one is made. This is a full core strand. I'm gonna say this. This is your specification information right here because this is something that I haven't done before on my channel. So. I'm going to just show you this. This is a four-strand core with an offset working end. That's what I call this. I don't know if there's an actual name for this. I haven't heard anybody give it a name. I've seen it done in quite a few tutorials, but nobody's ever given this a name. I call it a, you know, it could be a two-strand. I don't know if I've ever seen a two-strand core like this. I'm sure, I'm sure there's one out there somewhere. But, you know, it could be... A two strand, a four strand, six strand, eight strand, sixty four strand, one hundred twenty whatever strand core. It doesn't matter. It's an offset working in. What I mean by that is most of our bracelets we make. Um, and I, I made a tutorial for this. How to set this up? That's the newest one I made. Um, if you don't know how to do it, you want to see how to do that. You want to see how I do all this. All the print work of me setting this up. There's a link in the description. I always look to the description. There's a link in the description to, um, there's two actually. One for tips and tricks playlist. Check that out. And, uh, there's another one for core strand setup playlist. Go down there and you'll see a, click on it, go to the playlist and you'll see there's one that says, there's two actually. One for a four strand core with an offset working in, there's a deep cut and a shallow cut version. Deep cut is where I explain uh, the, the workings of this. I show you how I measure out my jet. I show you everything I do to prepare for this. But then there's the shallow cut. And that's basically over here under there. It's kind of a quick reference. Once you know how to do it and you're like, well, I can't remember exactly how to do it. Let me watch that little quick video. Does that make sense? That's what that is. So you got a deep cut and a shallow cut. I've been thinking about trying to do that with these bracelets. I get, I got a lot of videos and a lot of them are long because I give tips, tricks, and I talk. But uh, I'm thinking about going back and doing a, those would be considered a deep cut. I'm thinking about going back and doing a shallow cut version on some of these. What do you think? Leave, leave, leave me some response and feedback in the comments below. But, okay, like I was saying, a offset working in. Four strand core with an offset working in. What I mean by that, like I said, I ain't never heard anybody put a name to it, but what I mean by that, you can see this. Normally when we make a bracelet, we have, we, we do, we hitch, we begin by hitching at the center of our cord and setting up our core strands and then our two working ends coming off either side are of the same length, equal length. And you weave them down your bracelet. Right? Okay. A lot of the braces I've been making lately are not like that. They are like this. This is not a working in. I, this will not be woven into this bracelet. All of it, all the excess, when you set this up, all the excess goes to one side. It's offset to one side. So, you know, 13, 14, 15 feet or whatever, you do all your slack. All your excess is up here, so, you know, it's it, usually on one of these braces, you got a whole lot of, to deal with, and you get all tangled up, right? This is for, this is nothing. All of it, this is what gets woven to make the bracelet. Somebody, somebody commented, they said, what? I, what? Yes, there are bracelets like that. In fact, the one we're making today, the modified, or the Sonic Armor modified. Here's one where I've done the center stitch, here's one where I've done you know, the center and the side stitch. And we're going to be doing this one today in some different colors. This is olive drab, right I've got here. My signature colors. Olive drab, and I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to stitch down the center in maroon, and the two side stitches are gold. Just so we know up front. The center stitch, obviously, this is zigzag pattern. That's one long cord. Now, this stitch over here, that's another cord. And this one over here is another cord. So it's three separate stitches. Does that make sense? Okay. But anyway, with all that said, I'll show you this too. So this is what we're going to be weaving with. But this, you're like, well, what are you going to do with that? The reason it's so long, I'll explain this. I explain this in my, in the, you know, how to set this up video. But I'll do it here briefly. 
this, the reason I've got this so long is because if any of you watch any of my videos, you know I will not, will not, I say that again, I will not have a cut and burn right here on the side where it can be seen. I am going to tuck everything around the back side of the bracelet, the non-display side, and that's where my cut and burns will be. That way the product is neat, clean, and tight. That keeps it neat and clean looking. I don't want big cut and burn marks down here where you can see them on the side or up on the display side. So, that's why this is a little long. Why? I'll show you. <clears throat> that way, in the end, after I weave the entire bracelet, you'll see me do this at the end, but I, I'm going to tell you now. At the end, I put my fit on here. And the, the length of this cord is just a little bit longer than the length of my fit. Now, I know we all have different lengths of fit, stitching it, or whatever you want to call it, I call it a fit. Um, We all have different lengths, but the cord is just a little bit longer than that. Why? That way I can fold it back over itself, you see what I'm saying? And I can get the point into the knot in the back. After I weave the bracelet, I'm going to back weave this up under through a knot, a loop, or something, and I'm going to get it on that back side of that bracelet, then I'm going to cut and burn that excess off. But that's why it's so long. But this is actually not going to be used in the weaving of this bracelet. That's all it's there for. In fact, you know, I probably, here, let me do that right now. I can, in, in fact, just kind of get it up out of the way. That way it's not flopping and dangling in our way. Makes sense? That, that's that's what that is. Okay, now, with all that said, I know I talk and I ramble, but hopefully, you know, things people, you know, I've heard people say, he, you overly explain things, but I've heard people say he thoroughly explains things. You see the nuance difference there. But if you listen and you pay attention, a lot of people say, just listen to what he says. You might, you're going to pick things up. Tips, tricks, you're just going to pick it up if you just sit and listen. Okay, but with all that said, let's start this. This one is not that hard of a weave. It's really not. Um, the, the biggest issue, the two biggest issues I found, um, is because you have an offset working in, you have all this slack on one side, so you're, you gotta, you weave it through, you gotta pull, you gotta pull all this slack through. So, you know, be mindful of your twist. I always say that. Be mindful of your twist. And don't let this, when you go to do it, don't let it get caught on something. And you knock your coffee cup over. You knock your open candle flame over. Whatever. You know, just be mindful of all this excess cord, right? Okay, the next thing is this. I've said this in quite a few of my videos. When you're going to do stitching, <coughs> and you know you're going to come back and stitch it, after the fact, not interweaving the micro cord while you do the brace. I'm talking about after you finish and you're going to come back and take that little tiny stitching needle and you're stitching. If you know you're going to do that, do not pull this thing as tight as you, for me, as I normally would. Because I pull my, my braces very tight. I make them, they're very tight. I know some people don't do that, but I do. So, I know if you're, if I'm going to stitch the thing, don't pull it so tight. Why? Because you want a little bit of space so you can get your stitching needle through there. And I'll tell you this from experience. You you wave it out and it's, it, it, it's a little, it, for me, I'm like, yeah, that's a little loose. But once you come back and stitch it, it fills in all those little gaps and it tightens the thing up. You see what I'm saying? In fact, there are some bracelets that that add to number has to be more like, if I don't put stitching, I add to this much. But if I know I'm going to stitch, I, my add to has to be a bigger number. It, it, it actually affects the size of the bracelet. But anyway. Okay, now I say that to say this. If you know you're going to stitch it, don't weave it as tight as you m potentially normally would. And when I say that, and I emphasize it on this bracelet. Because I noticed the first time I did this, I won't, I, you know, I did it you know, pretty tight. And then when I come back to stitch it, it was almost, it was, it was very hard to get that needle through there. And as you work down and stitch more and more and more, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Makes sense? Okay. So just be mindful of that. Now, with all that said, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's not, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. And then the fact that you've only got one working in, 
that makes it even easier. Like I said, it's not that hard. So we'll get started. Let's zoom in just a little bit, and I'll show you this. This was not that hard to do. Let's zoom in just a little bit so perhaps you can see this better. Yeah, that'll work right there. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm going to do it this way, okay? Okay, what we're going to do, if you can see this, so we got four, four core strands. What we're going to do is we're going to go, we're coming from this side. We're going to go over three and under one. And I'm going to do it this way, like this, okay? All this excess down here, just ignore that for right this second. We're just going to go over three and under one. We see this right here. Over three and under one. All right? Now, I'm going to take this slack out. Like I said, there's a lot of it, so just be mindful. I'm holding this, you know, like I've said in some of my videos, I'll hold it right here to maintain this little bit of a loop I've got. Okay. There's the other end. Now I'll show you this. I'll show you this with the working with the end on how to do this. Now this right here, pay attention. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm on this side. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go over two. So basically what I'm gonna do over these first two from the direction I'm on at, and I'm gonna go down through that middle slot, right? Now, we're going to come back this direction, but we're going to go under one. So we're going to go under that one and over this last one. Hopefully that makes sense and you can see this. Let's see, if I can't zoom in, maybe it'll make it a little bit better to see. You come down, you go over three and under one, and then all my excess is over here, and it comes back up, and then you go over two, down, and then you go under one, right here, we go under one, and then we go over this last one. And when we do, this loop that is formed over here, we make sure I'll show you. Don't do it this way. Come up above it like this. We see that? And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this and we're going to take all this slack out. Does that make sense? Now when I do this, because I know what's coming and I've anticipated this and I've done this a few times, this is the way I do it. Instead of just pulling right here, I'll reach back here. I get a little slack in this this little bend, this bite, I just kind of hold that because that, I want to maintain this little loop back here because it'll come into play in a second. Right? So just kind of, this is the way I do it. You know, hold your finger back here. You can do this any way you want. I'm just sure. I'm kind of poor. You see what I'm saying? This is the way I do it. Now you can do it. You can do it like this. You, you cannot do it. Don't worry about it. Just pull it through. Pull all so there's a lot of it. <laughs> There's a lot of excess. But when you get to the point right here, you don't want to tighten it up too much. Reach back here and take, create that bite. You see what I'm saying? You can do it one of, however you want. Okay, now, here's the part where we're going to tighten this one up. So let me back out just a little bit. Actually, let me see if I can't do this. I'm going to try to move the camera just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. Okay, this is one of those because you see what I've done. Because it's wrapped around itself so many times, I can't just pull here and expect it all to tighten up. I've said this in quite a few of my videos. This is one of those that you got to tighten up in sections, right? And a lot of people, some of the videos, well, there ain't no videos for this. There's no video for this that I know of. But, you know, other bracelets, I've seen people 
who actually articulate this information and they'll show you. But most of the time, you, they won't tell you this, but you see them do it. And if you know what's going on, you understand what they're doing. But a lot of times they don't tell you. I try to tell you this. You can't just pull here. If I try to pull this here, it's not going to tighten all this up correctly. So what I'll do, like I said, maintain this loop back here. You do like this. Kind of push it all up. Push it up to the buckle. And grab it right over here. And you're going to tighten this loop up first. See how that does? And then you, you just kind of hold it up. And this loop you've created back here in the back, you're going to pull it and it's going to tighten this section up. Whoop, wrong side. You see that? And now you're right here, you can pull this and it'll take that final loop out of the back. Whoop, sorry for the shaking. I said, I apologize, not the best equipment, not the best setup. But that's it. That's all there is to it. But you see how you got to, you got to make sure you get them overs and unders right. And then you just tighten it up in sections. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in, in the other direction. So let me back the camera out again. And I'll show you this. I'll show you this again. This one's not that hard. It's really not. Okay, I'm going to adjust the camera again. That way I can get more. Of the cord. We don't need to necessarily see the buckle. We just want to see the, the cords. Uh oh, uh -oh. what I do? Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna go the other direction. All right. So I'm gonna take our cord. I'm gonna go over three and under one. We say that right here. Over three and under one. I'm going to hold that, and I'm going to pull out a mile of excess. I mean, you know, it's like 13 feet, 14 feet, something like that. It's actually not that much. That's what the total length of the cord is. But it, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, so be mindful. All right, now look at that. All right, over three, under one. Now we're going to come back, and, I, and I'll show you again. I'll do it with a working end again. The very end of the cord. Now, we're going to go back this direction and we're going to go over two. I'm going to go down through that middle. We see that? Over two and down through the middle. Then we're going to go back that direction under one. Here. Now zoom back in so you can see, see, see this setup again. See what I'm saying? We're coming down here. We're going over three, under one. All the excess is running down, blah, 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 and it's coming back up here. And we're going over two, under one, coming back through. And this piece right here, we're going to keep it above this, not underneath, above it. Right? And like I said, you can either pull it here or you can anticipate what's coming. Either way, it doesn't matter. I just kind of maintain that loop because you're going to need that loop back there in a second. So either way, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to do it this way just because it's quicker, easy, quicker. Now, you see how I'm getting twists? Because you got so much cord, you have to be mindful of these twists. Ooh, let's see. Nope. Only this way. And when you get to close to the end right here, mate, get your twist out. Get your twist out. Okay. Now, I'll show you this all again. Let's see how we got this. I'll show you. I'll explain to you one more time. We'll come down. we go over three. And we go under one. Then we come back and we go over two, down to that middle slot, under one, and we come out. And we come out above this loop we've created. Right? We don't go down through the loop. We just come above the loop. Right? Now, here's where we tighten it up. So, let me back out so you can see. So, what we're going to do, like I said... Form that little bite in the back. Because we tighten this one up in sections. 
So we're just going to kind of run everything up. Push it toward the buckle. And you're going to reach over here on this loop. What we're doing is tightening up this first section. You see that? Make sure there's not a twist in your cord as you do this. Right there. Now we're going to reach back here in the back where this little loop is we formed. And we're going to tighten it up. And we're going to we're tightening up this loop right here. Right. Remember, don't pull these real tight. Because we're gonna, we're gonna stitch this middle and it can be, it can be, yeah, it can be hard if you tighten these up really, really tight. Now, every time you, you, you go to tighten up the section and you move, you do your hands, I always keep my hands on here, kind of keep it pushed up just a little bit. Not real, not a lot, but just keep it pushed up a little bit. Cause again, that'll affect, if you push it up way too much, it's gonna be real tight, and you won't be able to get the needle through there. But now that we got there, we got that last bit we pull, and we make sure as we pull, we don't get any twist in the back of it. Right? And that's all there is to this one. I'm gonna do it one more time. We go over three, and under one. Or slack it. Okay, now I'm going to show you with the working end. We're going to come from this direction. And we're going to go over two. And down through there. Back that direction under one. And keeping that working end up here. Don't go down that way. You want to come up this way. Right? And now, you just pull the slack through. All 72,000 feet of it. <laughs> As you do this... This excess will, you know, obviously it's not going to be as much when you get closer to the end. But in the beginning, yeah, it's a whole lot because of the offset working in. Okay, you see all these twists I've got. i got to get them out. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get them out there, and then we're going to get this one out. So I think, oh. I think I got them all out. And these things, these, these like this, where you got all this cord and you have to go back and forth, back and forth, over here, under there, and all that, they're notorious for getting twists. So you, you got to be mindful. got to be mindful of these twists. Okay, now that we got it up there like that, yeah, there's still a twist right there. Okay, I think I got them all out. I'll fix it as I go. Now that we got it all like that, we're back to where... We're pushing it up, and we're going to tighten it up in sections. So, I'm going to reach up here with this hand, and I'm going to push it up this way. And we're going to tighten up this first loop. I'm going to reach back here, tighten it up. And I'm going to switch hands. And this little loop back here that you form, you see how it's tightening up this side? And you see there's like a little twist right there. I'm going to get that out by rotating this cord as I pull it. See how it's fixing that twist? Now tighten it. Switch hands again, and I'm going to pull this one. And I'm going to make sure as I pull it, that twist is not on the back. Bam, there we go. Makes sense? I'll do it one more time. From this side, going that direction. Over three, over three, under one. Pull out your 72,000 feet of cord. <laughs> Okay, now, we'll use the working end. I'll show you this one time. With the working end, we're going to go back this direction over two. So basically, we're going to go down through the middle. Then we're going to go that direction under one and come up. Like I said, this is where you want to keep this cord up through here. You don't want to go through, down through this loop. Don't want to go down through this loop. You want to come above this loop. All right, so... You just pull your slack through. Like I said, see the twist. It's going to get twists in it. Because you got so much cord, there's going to be twist. And usually what I do is I get them all down here to the end, and that's when I'll get all these little twists out. Right before I tighten it all up. And I'll start right here, and I'll follow this cord around, and I'll get the twist out as I go. So now all that twist is right there. We'll get it out right here. All you do to get these twists out is you twist 
you twist up here and it, you know, you'll learn from experience which way you need to twist this to get it out. If that makes sense. All right, so we got there. There we go. And that's it. Comes down, it goes over three, under one, back over two, and then under one. And there you go. And that's it. Now, here we go. We're going to push it up. We're going to take out that first loop first by pulling right here. And I can see it's, it's got a little twist in it, so I'm going to fix that as I do it. All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach back here. I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to pull that little loop back there and get this one out. Mindful of that twist. See how it straightened itself up? It's because I'm, as I'm pulling the cord, I'm rotating it too. And it's getting that little bit of a twist out. Alright. Kind of snug it down. Switch hands again. Always keeping a little bit of pressure toward the top. And then right here, we're going to pull this one out. And we're going to make sure that it's not twisted here. Let me do it this way so I can see. My hand's not in the way. We see that? And we can see the pattern is starting to form. And that's all there is to this one. It's not that hard of a weave. It's, like I said, you've got so much excess. Here, let's back out. You've got so much excess, it has, a, it's very prone to getting twists in it. And you have to be mindful of those. As you pull it through, you just gotta work those twists out. Right? And, you know, it's like anything else. The more you do it, you'll get better at it. You know, do it a few times. And you'll see these twists and you'll anticipate and your hands will automatically start as you pull in the cord, you're rotating it also to get them twists out. That's what I do. Right now. Let's say we get it up there. I need to pull this just a little bit tighter. See how see how that, that wrap around on that edge is a little, little loose. I need to tie, I'll tighten those up. I'll tighten them up. I'll, I'll, I'll fix those. But I'm just showing you the overs and unders now. Okay, with all that said, that's, that's the overs and the unders and how I do it or whatever. Okay? Just to kind of give you a, a, a bird's eye view. Now, like I do in a lot of my videos, I started doing this. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to, less commentary and I'm going to just let you watch my hands. Pay attention to my hands. That's something a lot, I don't know if a lot of people do that or not. I know when I watch these videos, <coughs> if there's, I've said this before, if there's multiple videos, tutorials on how to make this specific design I'm doing, I'll watch all of them. Listen to what they gotta say, if they give some tips and tricks, but I'll watch what their hands do. And the way they do it, and, and just look at their technique. Right? <clears throat> you wanna get better? Watch people who are better than you, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody, but you know what I mean. Watch the way other people do it and see how they do it. And, you know, take this from one person, take that from another person, and incorporate it into your own style. And you get better at it. And I guarantee you, the more you do this, you'll get used to seeing these things and the way this is done or whatever. That you're like, yeah, that's kind of similar to this, this way this weave's done. Makes sense, but... I'm going to just do this. I'm going to weave this a few times down and just let you see my hands and what I do. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, we're going to go over for I usually hold it and pull the slack through. And all this about I'm about to do, I do this kind of all in one motion. Do you think? I'll get it, I'll do the over two and the under one, and I'll hold up here where the over two is, and I'll grab it down here, and I'll pull it slack through. That's the way I do it. And then when I get to this point, that loop on the back I need to maintain, I'll, cr I'll create that loop back there. Kind of tighten it all up as I go and get the majority of my slack out as I kind of work it up, and then I'll just reach up there and push it up. And I do this, instead of switching hands, I'll reach back there on the back side. Because i got enough room in between the jig and the way this thing's set up. And I'll do it all with one hand. Does that make sense? That way I'm not having to 
switch back and forth. But I know some people's jig, there's not enough clearance between the back side of this bracelet and that jig. You can't get your hands on it. That's why I built mine, mine that way, so I can get my hands back there and do this, and it makes it a little faster. But we see how I did it. Okay, I'll do it one, I'll do it one more time for you. We're going to go over three, under one. I'll hold it right here, and I'll pull my slack out. And you see how I'm doing this, right? Pulling it. Yeah, that's why I've got a bandaid on this hand. <laughs> I, do, I make quite a few bracelets and I do get rope burns. Okay, now I'm going to do I'll do this again. I, the over two and the under one, I do it all kind of in one motion. Come up here. Go. Over two. Under one. And I'll hold it right, right there. And then I'll pull. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't right. Yeah, I did that wrong. Go over two, under one. There we go. And hold it right there. I'm pulling my slot there. Oh, 72,000 feet. Well, it's probably not 72,000 feet right now. But see, and as you get it, kind of work. Work your slack out. Create that loop back here that you're going to grab a hold of so you can tighten it up in section. See what I'm saying? And just kind of push it up. Tighten that one up. I'll reach back here. Let's see. Hang on a second. Pull that one. Pull this one. Ooh, got a twist. Got to get that twist. Let's see how I'm rotating that cord. And then we pull it. All right. One more time. I'll show you one more time. Over three under one, hold it. See, that's where that burn comes from on my my hand. All right now, we're gonna go over two, under one, and I'm gonna hold it, and I'm gonna pull all this through. And as I'm working it up, I'm getting all that excess out. Now reach back here and create that little loop. Push it all up. Tighten the first one up. Reach back here. Tighten up his next section. And then tighten this up. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And you can see the pattern starting to form. Yeah. But that's all there is to it. Now, with all that said, um, Let's back out. Let's back out. Okay, like I said, we're going to do some stitching on this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and weave this thing out to the end. When I get down to the, right before I get to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off. And like I say, I've said this before in the videos. I know when I first started off, my, my thing was always, how do I start? How do I get it set up? How do I start? And how do I finish? And I wanted to watch somebody else do it. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'll say, as you do this more and more and more, um, I, I'll, I'll just tell you from my own personal experience. If I don't know how to do a bracelet, obviously I need to, you know, learn. And I'll watch a video, look at a pictorial, or whatever, and I'll get the overs and unders and I'll do all that and then I'll make it. I do, and by the time I've made one of them, most of the time, there are a few I've had to make two or three times to get it wired. But by the time, most of the time, by the time I'm finished, I've got it done. But watching the tutorial, that used to be the most important part. How did they finish it? How did they end it? I don't, I don't even pay attention to the way they end it anymore. It's because I've done this enough, and through experience, I've gained confidence. And I know what I'm going to do when I get to the end is I'm going to have that cord or cords or however many it is. They're all going to be on the back side and get cut and burned. So I don't really, I, I'll watch what they do because I'll be like, oh yeah, I can do that too sometimes. But most of the time I just do it and I'm going to get my cords on the back. And that's why, you know, I'll show you how I do it at the end. I know my way is better than anybody else, but I know people first starting off, that's that was me. I always wanted to know how do they finish it. How do they start it? And how do they finish it? It's like the most critical uh critical aspect of flight is takeoff and landing. 
for those who don't know, I was an air traffic controller in the United States military. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, take off and landing. Right? But before I get to, I'll weave it all out. When I, when I get close to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finished this one off. And then we'll do some stitching. And the stitching on this one's not hard. This, this center part can be a little tricky because you got to get those angles correct. And this, it can be difficult to get it to go through there, even if you don't tighten it up. Like I said, don't tighten it up too tight because we're, we're going to stitch it. But it still can be a little tricky. This center stitch, you have seen a lot of my bracelets. Like this one right here, it's the same principle. Now, obviously, the back side of this looks different than the back side of this one. So it's a little bit different. But I do this this zigzag center stitch on a lot of my bracelets. And it's always slightly different. But this one, it can be a little tricky on this one. So, you know, I'll show you. Now, this side stitch, yeah, that's that's pretty easy. It's pretty relative, straightforward, simple, quick. All you do is just wrap it around. But, like I said, I'm going to weave this out. When I get done, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do it. But with that, appreciate you watching. Stick around, and we'll we'll get this thing made, and we'll get you, we'll get you a... Uh, a stitch modified sonic armor bracelet. Bam. Looks good. All right. I'll be back in a moment, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got the thing weaved out to the end, except for right here at the end. And I'll show you, like I said, at the end of the last little section. You know, I know I always wanted to know how somebody ended it. And, you know, how they started it and how they ended it. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in and... So you can see this. Alright, just so you can see this. Now I'll say, I'll say this. In my, the way I do these things, like I said, I watch the way other people end them, but just from experience, I've kind of learned to do this, you know, just kind of on the fly, if you will. Try to maintain the, you know, the, the nature of the weave once you get down to the bottom. And it all depends on how much you know, room you have there at the end, right? Now, what I've done is I've done, you know, one complete repetition of the weave, and you can see on this side right here, this last wrap around, there's not, there's not enough room, right? But over here on this side, it's like one little bit more room, I can probably get one more in there. But there's also, if you look, a handy dandy laser pair called a pointer here, if you look right here, you can see that hole right there in the middle, right? Right there. So we're going to fill all that in. The way I'm going to do this, let's see. I think this will work. I think this will look right. If we go there. Yeah, it'll be, it, it won't be completely consistent with the way the weave is, but it'll be in the nature of the weave. If, you know, you always try to keep it. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I already got my, my fid set up. I'm going to just go down through that middle hole. And that's going to create one more little angle. See how all these little angled pieces are? Hey, angle, angle, angle. That's going to create one more angle right there. Right? We see that? And then to do this, I'm going to just wrap back around and I'm going to run it down through there again, through that center hole again. Right? I just kind of pull it. Now see, it kind of maintains. It's not the exact same. If you, if you look at it closely, it's not the exact same, but maintains the consistent look of it. Right? Okay, now, here we go. I got doing all these videos. I tell you, I put these, I pull these things pretty tight, and I always show you this. When I unclip it at the top, you can see this thing jump, and you can see how much, whatever. Well, let's go ahead and take this clip off. Alright? Just watch this. I always find this interesting. You see, right, the, where the connection point is. Watch when I unclip it. See how much there is between there now? That's that quarter of an inch I, was talk, I talk about when I pull this thing tight. But let's go ahead and get this thing off the jig. 
get our jig out of the way. I say this in a lot of these. You know, I always kind of try to dirt, debris, lint, whatever. Try to get all that off. Because now what we're going to do, what I do anyway, the way I do this, is I'm going to take this bracelet. See, we have the, the display side. This is how we want to maintain and look good. And uh, I'm going to flip it over so I can get to the back of it. And I'm going to lay it down. So I don't want that to play, display side on the dirty surface. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. Let's see. Okay. Alright, I think what I'm going to do, first off, is I'm going to leave this here for now. I'm not going to back weave it into anything yet. Why? That way, I'll be able to get, let's just see, hang on a second, well, yeah, hang on, let, let me see, let's just see how tight, what I'm going to do, you can see how it wraps around, you got these two center strands, two center core strands, and you see you got all these little wraparounds, right, I'm going to go up under them, let's see how tight those are, maybe I can get that up under there. No problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this hanging for right now. I'm going to do this probably be the very last thing I tuck up under there. But what I'm going to do, just so you know, when I do this stitching, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in so you can see this. You've heard me say this in a lot of my videos, and I'll, I'll say it here now. What I do, no matter, I'm going to have this, the cords on the back side. That way all my cutting burns are on the back. I'm not going to have them on the side where they can be seen. They're definitely not going to be on the top. We want it neat, clean, and tight. And in order to keep it neat and clean, we get all the burns on the back or cutting burns on the back, right? Okay. So with that said, and I try to get them, I try to, if possible, it's not always possible, but I try to get them all in one place, right? So we're going to be stitching this one. So we're going to have we're going to have three pieces of cord. Like I said, it, you know, you got one down the side. Here, I'll show you over here on this one so you can see this. You got one piece of cord doing this center zigzag, and then you got a piece over here and a piece over here. So you got three pieces of micro cord. Well, we want them all in one place. And since we have this cord also, we're going to put them, we're going to get them all in one place. If you can look on this one right here. You can see the maybe here. Let's get this light over here. Maybe you can see this. See how I've tucked this piece back under them two loops. It's kind of hard to see. Well, if you turn it in an angle, you can see, you can see why I've anchored that micro cord. And it's going through, they're all going through that same loop. Why? That way I can have one cut and burn right there. And I'm going to do the same thing down here in the bottom. If you can see this. This piece, this piece right here, it's going to be tucked under, tucked up under these two loops, but I'm going to end my micro cord also there. Right? So, what I'm going to do, so I'm not struggling. Yeah, I've learned. Instead of trying to tuck tuck this piece up under there, let's run our micro cord first. Then when we get done, and we'll tuck it up, tuck the micro cord up under these two little wraparounds. Then we'll come back and we'll tuck this under there. Makes sense. So, what we're going to do is, let's just go ahead and take this fit off. Here, let's do this. Yeah, we'll just leave it hanging. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that at the end. Okay, so, to stitch this thing, I'm going to show you how I do this. Okay, we see, uh, let's see. There's, when I do this center stitch, if you look really close, like I say, I pay attention to the details and I try to get it consistent. And your average person who doesn't make paracord, they probably would never notice what I'm going to point out. But you who are making this, once I point this out, you'll see it. And you'll go, oh, okay. Now, you don't have to do this, but you can. I'll show you. And I've done it. I pointed this out in a few of the past videos where I've done this little zigzag center stitch. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is just one of the things that it keeps it neat, it keeps it clean, clean and it keeps a consistent looking stitch. If we look closely at this, 
Okay? I know it's not in the best of focus, but you will be able to see this. You see how this top part, it comes out and it goes down at an angle. And it goes up under this other piece of microcord. Right? And then this piece goes over and it goes up under this piece of microcord. You see, the, the bottom of every, every one of these little zig or zags, every one of these little angle pieces, the bottom of it goes underneath the piece that's coming out. Right? That keeps it consistent looking. And that's, that's, that's where the patience and the attention to detail comes in on these things. Right? You don't have to do it that way. But what happens is, now that I've pointed it out to you, you'll see it. But I try to, I will try to get every one of them, I say try, every one of them will be that way. And that's where a little, it takes a little bit of time to get it to do. But once you do it, you're like, okay, I got it. We see that though. Okay, so, well, like I said, we've got one piece down this middle. That's all one big long piece. And we're going to do that one first. Then we'll come back. I'm going to do these sides. Right, the one in the middle is the more complicated. The side ones, they're 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 pretty easy. So, I've already got my piece cut for this center, and I'm gonna show you how I do this. We're gonna flip, not there. We're gonna flip it over. I've got my piece over here, and I, like I said, I'm gonna use maroon. I've already got it shed up, got it put in there, and I, I'll, I'll say this: when you put that in there, make sure it's in there. Right? Okay. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna get all this slack out. And just like on this one, if we look, you got this this angled piece. I'm not counting that one because it's so long. We're going to start on this first one. See, this one right here. We're going to stitch right here in this little groove, right? We're going to come out right here, and we're going to go back through the bracelet right there. But first, we got to anchor it on the back side. The way I'm going to do this, you can anchor it however you like, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Like I said, because this cord is on this side, so I'm going to anchor it down this this core strand. You, know, you got two center core strands. I'm going to do it on the one closest to this. Right? That way, this thing's not having to cross all the way over the bracelet to go down. It's going to be right there. Makes sense? Okay, so let's see. How many are we going to go up under? Let me see. Will it go right there? Yeah, that'll work right there. Okay, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to go through right here. So I'm going to back up two, two little wraparounds here, and I'm going to go under right there. I'm going to go under this one, and I'm going to go under this one, okay? And I've said this before. Most of you know this. Maybe you don't. If you've never done any of this stitching, take your bracelet and kind of bend it a little bit. You always bend your bracelet. That way you, you, get, a, you get more of a straight shot. You're not trying to dig up under the thing. Because when you do that, you take a chance of poking your cord. That causes runs, and we don't want that. We want to keep it neat. So we're just going to go under there. And like I said in the beginning, if you know you're going to stitch it, don't pull the things tight. Why? This is one reason. So this will go up under there easier. See? I went up under those two. I'll run it through. Pull it up. And once you get to right there, I always reach up there kind of with my thumb and press it back down. That way there's some resistance. So when I go to start pulling, I don't pull it and it comes all the way through. And then I have to do this process again. So pull it. Just be mindful. Okay, pull it. When you get right close to the end, just stop and leave you a little, leave you a little bit hanging. Okay, now, what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to go through right here in this area. Let's see if I can show you this. We're going to go through right here. And we're going to come out 
right here. Above this one, but below this wraparound. Let me let me get it through there and I'll show you. Well, you got when you put it in there, you gotta put it in there and you you'll feel it go through there, but you gotta give it a little bit of a downward angle. The way mine's woven, you gotta give it a little bit of a downward angle to get it to go in that right spot, to come out right there where you want it. Get it together through there. We see where I got it coming out, and you see where I got it going in. Okay, now we're just going to push it through, and we're going to put a polar excess through. Always be mindful of your twists. See how I got all these little twists? Like I said in the first part of the video, when you, when you get down to here and you see all these twists, all you do is you rotate this. That's what I do. Rotate this right here. See how it's doing? And as you pull it, you'll learn from experience which way you, you should rotate it to get that twist out. Just pull it. Okay. Now don't try to don't try to snug anything down yet because we don't want to pull this all the way through. So we're gonna flip over. We're gonna get our needle. Now what we're gonna do here? Hopefully you can see this. Let me see. Can I angle that line a little bit better? Yeah, I think that'll work. Hey, you see that a little bit better. What we're gonna do? Like I said, we're gonna follow this little right here. This this little groove right here and we're gonna go back down through here now when we come out on the back side what we're gonna do we're gonna come out let me make sure I'm looking at it right here you can't quite see it but up under this piece of red microcord there's another piece but basically what it is, it's going to come out on this side of the, of this, this center core strand. And we're just going to wrap around that core strand and we're going to go back through. All right? And then we're going to do that, the angle. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to wrap around over here on this side, go through, and we're going to wrap every one of these little, every one of these little wrap arounds on these core strands. We're going to do one on this side. And then we're going to do one on this side. Then the one on this side. One on this side. Alright, that's what the back is basically is. And it's going to give us this zigzag. Alright. Okay, now. So what we're going to do. We're going to come here on this side. We're going to, we're going to go right through right there. Alright. Now you got to get an angle on this thing. So it goes right through there a little bit. Now you see, I come out in the middle of the course strand. I don't want to come out right here. I want to come out on this side of the course strand. So I'm going to run it back up in there and kind of get that angle on it. You got to kind of... There we go. You see that? Where I went through at... You see where I'm coming out at, right below that little wraparound. Right now, we're just gonna push. I'm gonna pull a slide through. All right. Now again, don't want to pull it really tight yet because we don't want to suck this. On. You can hold this with your thumb back here. When you've anchored it, hold that with your thumb. Kind of give it a little, a little tug, but you don't want to do it too much. You'll see why in just a second. All right? So, so we see that. Where it's at. Okay. Now, what we're going to do on this back side, we come, we come right here. We're just going to wrap around this core strand and go through right here, and we're going to come out. Let me do this and I'll show you. I got to, I got to be able to see this. I can't quite do this on camera. I have to be able to see this. But once I get it to come out, you'll see. Okay. 
You say where, hopefully that can be seen. You see how the needle is coming out toward the top. When I say the top, I'm talking about the buckle, that direction, above or the top of that piece of microcord, right? That's where, that's how you maintain, like I said, the end of it always goes under and it comes back out on the top. We say that. Now, when you run this needle through here like this, sometimes it'll have a tendency and it'll want to come out. You see how now it's below that piece. I mean, you can do it below the piece, but I would advise you, however you choose to do it, above or below, every one of them be that way. That way it looks consistent. It's just the attention to details. Makes sense. But I... I always do it on the top side, right? And just push it through. Pull, pull your slack out. Make sure you don't have any twist. Now, when you get to right there, this is where I would tighten it up. I'm going to pull pull this, and it's going to tighten up that little piece. See if I can show you what I'm talking about. And I'll explain to you why I'm doing it this way. I'm going to pull this cord Right? And it's going to tighten up that angle that we just did. Right? And the reason I do, I pull it now and tighten it up is because I've got this through there. If I pull it, if I, when I ran, when I did this angle and I went through and I was on the back side and I tried to pull it real tight, what that's going to do is it's going to hinder me from getting, coming back up through and having this piece come out above. You see what I'm saying? You, you kind of want to keep that one loose. That one right there. You want that one kind of loose. That way you can get above it easier. Does that make sense? But now that I've got that one little wrap around on that core strand on the back, like I said, it wraps around that core strand right there. And it's hard to see because of the colors. Now that I got it done, what I'm going to do is I'll pull it. And you'll see, you'll see that little loose loop. It'll suck down in there. You see what I'm saying? And normally the way I do it to get, you know, to get some, a good hold on it, I'll lay it on the table kind of flat and hold the bracelet and I'll pull. Right. I'll tighten it up. Now, we're just going to repeat that process. One side, one side, one side, one side, all the way down. And like I say, it's not hard. You just got to get them angles just right to get it to go through and to come out where you want it. Right? Okay, so I'll show you, show you again. We're just going to follow the top of this next piece. We're just going to follow the groove, and we're going to go through right there. Now, this time when we come out, again, we're going to come out on the outside of this middle core strand on that side. All right, right in. Say so we got a wrap around here, we're gonna come out over here on this side and we're gonna do a wrap around that core strand. See how that is? You just alternating. This one's closest to the top, what's the next one? It's over here. And then the next one over here. And the next one over here. And you just work your way down, alternating the sides all the way down. <coughs> so we're gonna stick it through right here in this area. Like I say, you, you get it kind of started. And then you flip it over on the back and you look. See what I'm saying? Where it's coming out at? Just blow that wrap around. Just like this one was below that wrap around. This one over here also is below that wrap around. We just push it through there. We pull. And this is what I'm saying right here. Once you get it to right here, obviously mindful of your twist. But when you go to pull this, don't pull it real tight. Why not? That way you can come back and you'll, you'll get the, you'll see. We wrap around. We're going to go through this middle. You got to look at it. Make sure you got all your angle right. See how I'm coming out? And again, my needle is above that direction, above the piece we just ran. That's why I don't tighten that 
backed up so much so I can get it through there easier. Now that I got it where I want it, I can pull it through. Mind for a little twist. And you see how it's going to wrap around just below the thicker cord. You see what I'm saying? You got to wrap around a thick cord, wrap around a thin cord. And you pull it. Like I said, once you get it to this section, you got that little That little piece right there is loose. We're going to pull this and it's going to tighten that up. It's going to wrap around that core string and tighten it. All right, like I said, I'll, I'll sit it on the table and I'll just tighten it. Bam. And that's, that's all there is to this. And you just have to work your way patiently, very careful, mindful that you get your angles right and you go through there and work your way all the way down. All right, so again, we come we come out here, and we're gonna follow this groove, this angle right here, and we're gonna go through right there. So we're gonna stick it in there. Sorry, like I say, man, I apologize. I get out of frame. I'm trying to I'm trying to look at the monitor, which is that direction, and look at what I'm doing, and I don't always maintain everything. So we're gonna we're gonna go through here. See where I'm going through? And you see kind of the funky angle is that, right? It's going kind of downward, but it's also kind of going that direction. That way it'll come out on this outer side of this core strand on this side, right? Just below that wraparound. And we're just going to push it through, pull your excess through. Now this thing's going to get twisted because you got so much cord, you're going to get twisted. So be mindful of these twists. And you just pull it through. When you get down here to the end, like I say, rotate this cord one way or the other. And I'll help keep the thing out. Whoa, we wrapped around this thing. We don't want that. Now, we just kind of loosely pull it. That's all there is to that. All right? We loosely pull it. That, that way we can, we, when we come back through, we can come above that piece a lot easier. Because if you pull it real tight, then you, you're trying to fight to get it that needle to go where you want. So again, all we're going to do is follow, we're going to follow this wrap around on the bottom side. We're going to go through. Bam. You see that? It's coming out on this side now, and it's just above that piece of micro cord that we just ran that way. It's above it. Why we maintain that consistent pattern down through there. All right? Now we, we push it through. We pull it. Mindful of all these twists. Look at that big tangled mess we got right there. Once we get down here to the end, we just kind of pull it, and then I'll lay it over, and then this is when I'll pull it tight. And like I said, if you look, this piece right here that I just ran, you see how it's kind of loose and floppy? All it does is it goes through, it wraps around that core strand, and it comes back out. So when I pull, when I pull this right here, it's going to tighten that up. This is where you tighten each one of them, right here, and you just pull it. And you can look at it. You you can look at it right there and see. Now, I know you probably can't see it on very on the camera very well. But once you do this, you'll see it. You'll see it tighten up. Just kind of snug it down. Whatever. Look at it. Okay. And then we're just gonna do it again. I'll show you one more time. You go. We'll come out here, we're going to follow the groove, and we're going to go through right there. Now, this is the one you got to get that funky angle on it to get it to come out where you want it. And all we're doing, is we're going to come out on that outer side of that core strand, just below the next wraparound. See? Every one of the... The, the thick cords that wraps around those core strands has now got a piece of micro cord wrapped around it. And we're going to do the same thing here. Right? 
So you just run it through, pull your slack through, mindful of that twist. When you get right there, you just kind of loosely pull it. You don't want it real tight because we're going to run back through. Now we're going to wrap around that core strand just up under the thicker piece. We're going to go through here and we're going to come out. Right there, just above the one we just ran. Now, like I said, when I first did this, 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 this right here, what I'm doing right here is why I say do not tighten it up so much. Now, like I say, tighten, tight, loose is relative. I don't know how tight you normally pull your bracelets or how, you know, loose you leave them. But I know me, I will tighten that thing up as tight as I can. And it'll be rock hard. Well, I can't do that. If I'm going to stitch it. Because that first one I made when I did this. I tried to come back and stitch it. I got it stitched. It just took me a long time. Because first off it was tight to get that that stitching needle through. But it was also hard to find the space. You know you got to get that angle right to get the space to go in between the cords. As opposed to jamming through the cord. And it's harder when it's real tight. But like I say. You, I, I would don't tighten it up so much. That way, when you actually do do this, it's easier to do. And as you work your way down, you will like you feel. For me, anyway, this is me and my style. The way I do this, I can feel this right here. It's not real tight. It's it's kind of loose. I ain't gonna say it's loose, but it's not as tight as I would like it. But I can feel it. Now, as I start doing this zigzag stitch down there, I can reach back up here to where I've already done it. And I can feel it. And it's like, yeah, it's filling in all that little, all that looseness is being filled in by this micro cord. You think, ah, oh, it's just a piece of micro cord. You're right. But it, it's running through here 20 times and it's filling in all those little tiny gaps and it's t causing everything to tighten up. Does that make sense? That's why I say, you know, be mindful of it. it it's, it goes back to, I, I've talked about this before, tension consistency. Like, trilobite fishtails. You notice it so much on those. But how these wraparounds, you look at this. You see how all these little wraparounds are the same? You don't have this one sticking out real far and the next one pulled. It's because every time I pull these, I pull them with the same amount of tension. It doesn't have to be a lot of tension. It doesn't have to be less. It's not the amount of tension. It's the fact that it's consistent. It's the same every time you do it. Right? And it's the same thing with this middle section. Try That's a tension consistency. Tension consistency. That's something that I can't... I can teach you the con. I can tell you the concept, but the only way for you to learn it is to actually sit down and do it. And the more you do it, the better you will get at it. You see what I'm saying? And it comes down to feedback. You can feel, I can feel when this needle goes through there. If I'm hitting, if I'm jamming it through a cord, and it, it's just tactile feedback. That, that's the only best way I know how to explain it. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So, we're going to pull this slide through. I'll do this a couple of times, just let you, let me, let you see it. We've got it wrapped around the back. Now, now, this is where we're going to pull this cord, and it's going to tighten up that loop right there, right? Lay it on the table. Give it a right? Bam. And you can see the pattern start to form. And if you notice, the, it goes down, up under the piece. And then this side, it goes down, and it goes up under the piece. You see what I'm saying? The bottom of every one of these angled microcords goes under the piece that is coming out above it. Does that does that make sense? That's the the consistency I'm talking about. Alright, so we're just gonna run it through again. And this one this one it can be tricky. I'm telling you, this one can be tricky, but if you're if you if you're patient with it, you'll feel it. You'll get better at the at the stitching. I'm not an I'm not an expert by any means. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I just, what it, I've got, an, I've got some experience, and you'll see. And you see how it comes out right there where I want it to? 
<clears throat> but you'll get better. The more you do it, the better you'll get. And you'll start to be able to feel. And then you look at it and you'll see, okay, I need to do it this angle and that angle. And you, you, you will get better. I promise. The more you do it, the better you get at it. It's like anything. Practice makes perfect. Not that I'm perfect, but a lot better than when I first started doing this. We're going to wrap around that core strand just below that thicker piece. Wrap, wrap around, go through. And we're going to come out. See how he's wanting to come out below that piece of micro cord? No, no, no. Back it up a little bit. Move that piece of micro cord so you come out the top of it. That way every one of them is consistent. That's all there is to that. And you just pull it through. Mindful of your twist. Always be mindful of your twist. When you get down here to the end, start trying to correct those twists. Okay, something going on here. Yeah. See that? We'll just pull it. And right here is where you give it the tight. This is where you give it the tight cinch, hard cinch. Loose cinch, hard cinch. That's your, that's your hard cinch right there. But that's it. And now you just work your way down. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll stitch this out to the end. When I get close to the end, I'll come back and I'll show you how to tuck it through and all that. And then I'll start on one side and show you how to do that. Okay? So stick around and we're going to get this one made today. We're going to get this thing made today. Modif stitched, modified sonic armor. This is a great looking bracelet. All right? All right. Stick around. I'll be back. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got it stitched out almost to the end, not quite to the end. But I got it stitched out, I don't know. Looks like it's kind of hard to say. Let me adjust my light. There you go. Almost to the end. But down here at the very end, obviously it's going to be slightly different because we did a little weed different down there in the back. But it's no problem. But if you made it this far, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that was the hard part. What's to come? The stitching on the side? Oh yeah, this is pretty easy. This is pretty easy, pretty quick, pretty straightforward. Bam. Won't take long at all. But let me go ahead and finish this out. And uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to tuck this under. Or back weave it in the back because we're going to back weave all of them the same exact way. Or in the same exact place, I should say. <coughs> like I say, let's see. And I'll say this too, when you're doing this, there we go, when you're doing this and you get down here to the end where you kind of, the weave is not the exact same as the rest of it, you know, because you're trying to just fill in the space, but yet you want it to kind of look the same, you know, keep it, try to maintain that, that look, the pattern. I'm going to tell you, you don't always have to. See, you got two more little pieces. You don't always have to stitch it to the very, very end. You can leave that like the last one. It's not, I mean, preferably you want to go to the end, but if for whatever reason, if you don't go all the way to the end, it's not, it's not very noticeable. This one right here. Let's see. let's pull that one tight. Now let's do this last one. Let's see if I can get this one to go through. This one right here is probably going to be. I'll get it through there. It's probably here. Let me zoom in. Not that you'll be able to see very well, but hopefully. See, I got. This groove, and then I'm going to attempt to do something right here on this very last one, which I'm sure I'll be able to. Okay, that's not the right place. So we're going to back it out, kind of angle it over like we're supposed to, so we can get it on this side of that center core strand. Like I say, down here at the end, is a, 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 even though this right, this the, the weight did not, I get, I'm going through is still the same as the rest of them I've done just because it's down here at the end and it's kind of tight. Yeah, you might have to 
So there we go. I got it through there that time right there where I wanted it to. We can see where it went through, just like the rest of them. Where it come out. Uh oh. Don't fell out. I can get it back through there though pretty easy. There we go. Pull a slide through. Don't pull it too tight on that one. Now we're going to wrap around this core strand. And get this out of the way. Yep. Come out above that angle stitch we just did now. Pull it tight. Now see right here on the end. The last one I got to do. Is this one that I didn't do? All I, all this one did would go and it just runs through the back of the bracelet. So guess what? That's what we're going to do. And it's going to get, it's going to have a stitch. This zigzag pattern will go all the way to the end. But I got to get it through there without jamming it through anything. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work right there. That'll work. See that? Alright. Now, what we're going to do on the back side, what I'm going to do on the back side, like I said earlier, I'm going to tuck, I'm going to tuck this excess and this, but not yet. I'm not going to do this one yet. But I'm going to tuck this up under one, two, ah, two of these, three of these. It, it doesn't matter. With however many, I saw. Let's see. Let's say two of them. So I'm gonna run it up under these little wraps that go around that core strand twice. I'm gonna come out right here. Okay. And those, the wraps of this micro cord here. Let's see. You can see this. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Like where this bur or where this maroon also wraps around that core strand. Well, you got two wraps right here. Now, it doesn't matter. You can go under them, over them. It doesn't matter. All we're doing here is just anchoring the end. See how I did that? I know you can't see it. Let me pull this light. Maybe you can see it just a little bit better. But you see how it goes over that mar maroon wrap around right there. And it's going over this one, but it's kind of hard to see on camera. That's all I, I'm just pulling it through. I'll push it through, and this one's kind of tight. But you can get it through there, and then you can pull it. Okay, now I'm going to get this full. That gets caught on it. We're going to pull this through. All right. Make sure the front looks good. All right. I'll pull it. I'm going to leave myself, I don't know, inch and a half right here, a cord, inch and a half or so, and just cut it. And we're just going to give us a little, just to melt that in together, whatever. Okay, now, to do this side stitching, that's, uh, that's all we're going to do for right this second. Now we're going to come back. Like I said, I'm going to do it in gold. I'm going to do the side stitching in gold. All right, let's put this down here in our little scrap bucket. That, that piece right there. And I've already got my piece of gold cut set up, ready to go. Right. Okay. This, like I said, this one, it, this right here is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You're not having to find your way through them. You're not groping in darkness trying to get that needle to go through these braces. This one's pretty simple. So the way we're going to start this one out is just like we did. Let's pull this over here. We're going to start this gold piece out the same way we started this one out. That way, all these pieces of micro cord, even... It doesn't matter which side you do first. But that way, all your micro cord, and, he, and eventually this too, is all going to go up under these. 
and there's going to be one cut and burn that's going to be right there in that spot. That same principle we're going to go with on the bottom, right? But, so, we're just going to run this up under here. Now this one, let's say, let me, let me look at it to make sure I get, okay. I'm going to show you. If you, if you look, if you look close, you, you can kind of see it. This piece right here, it goes up, and you see it, and then it goes through, okay? Now, this gold in my hand, I'm going to stitch this side. So when I go up under these two knots, stay on this side of that piece. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to crack, because you don't want to jam your cord, through, even through that micro cord, right? And then when we come back and we do this gold stitching on this side, We'll, we'll go through the knots right here on this side. Does that make sense? Just kind of keep them orientated the same way. Makes sense. That, that's just me. Uh, <coughs> we can, like I said, you can bend that bracelet back just a little bit so you can get up under it a little easier. I said, being able to get this under here pretty easy to how it went under there pretty easy. That's why I haven't ran this through there yet. Because putting that big old fat cord through there, yeah, it can make it, it makes that little spot real tight. You can't always get, there we go, we got it up under both of them. Now, just like before, going to push it through. And once we get through, kind of press it back down. Now make sure this one right here, as you pull this gold, you don't want this piece to get pulled up in there too. So, you know, be mindful of that. But just pull it through. Leave, leave you a little hanging out, hanging out about the same length you did on the other one. About an inch, inch and a half or so. And it's eventually going to get cut off, so, you know. Right? They got two pieces hanging there. Okay, so, to stitch this, what we're going to do, I'll show you. Let's look at the... Let's look at the other one, and we can see how we see what we're going for. We have a we have a, a goal to look at, a model to look at. You see how I know it's not focusing very well, but you see where this black piece is just wrapped around this core strand, and that red is just below it. All right, same thing. You got a black wrap around, and then a red one. A black one and a red one. It's kind of the same principle as back here on the back, which you're familiar with because you've already done all this, right? So what we're going to do, if you look at this from a, from the side, if you look at this, see if I can hold this up here and you can see this. Okay, this is the top where we started weaving. And we're going to start our stitch right here, and we're going to go down. Okay, so if you look at the side of this thing, every one of these little wraparounds on this outer edge, you see what I'm saying? You see how they all have an angle to them. Correct? Okay. So, when we do this, this is this is the where the tricky part comes in, but it's not tricky at all. We say where we're at, we're going to go, we're going to go through right here in this area. Now remember, there's a core strand running through there, so we're, we're going to go, we want to stay on this side of that core strand, in between these two core strands, and we're going to go through there. But when we come out, we want to come out right here. And we're just going to wrap around that edge now. So, if you notice, if I, if I, put it through and I go straight through it's not going to work because the way these things all are angled when you go through you kind of go through at just a little bit of a downward angle and you'll come out let me get it through there and then I'll hold it up there so you can see exactly what I'm talking about you see where I'm going through at And you see where I come out at. Right? Now, hold your back pieces back here. Pull it 
pull them through, mindful of your twist. Like I said, this is pretty quick and straightforward. You know, having to fight through, you know, once you do this, once this little right here, you got it. And it's, it's, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. This is pretty easy. Okay, now, we're going to come back, and all we're going to do, you see, I know it's not focused very well, and for that, I apologize, but when you get the idea of what's going on here, let's see. Get that out of the way. Maybe that'll help. There we go. But you see where it is. All we're going to do is follow this groove around. We're just going to wrap this gold around the, around the outside edge of that core strand. But we're going to stay in this groove until we get back here in the back. Right? And when we get back here in the back, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, Follow the groove and we're going to go through and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go through here. We're going to go through at an angle. That way we can come out below this next wrap around right here in this, right here in this area. You see what I'm saying? It's pretty, you can pretty much going straight through, but you just got to kind of angle it downward just a little bit. That's all it is. And, you, and I, all you're doing, basically, like, if you could see this core string that's running down through here, and you look, you look at it like this, all you're doing is wrap, all you're doing is wrapping that gold around it. All the way down it. But every time you wrap, you gotta go through that bracelet right there. That's all it is. And the other side is the same way. You're just doing it, that, you know, it's a mirror image. So we're gonna stick it through. Let me look at this and make sure I get it to go through in the right spot. Yeah, you see how easy that went through? See where I got it to go through? And you see where it's coming out? I need to just run it through. Uh-oh. Dead gum. Mmm. I gotta fix that. I got a knot right there. That's not a twist. That's a knot. How do you... Alright, so we're gonna do this. This is how we're gonna do this. Hang on. See? Mistakes. But you learn how to fix these things. What I'm gonna do... Is I'm gonna unscrew my fid and get a hold of it. There we go. And then I'm gonna just kind of pull that back out. Now I'm gonna get this knot out. Let's see. Uh, and I know you can't see this on camera, and thankfully I can see well enough to do this. Things like this right here. Why well, I suggest one of these things, a magnifying glass with this little light on it. They come in handy. I don't, I don't use this all the time. I use it more for the light than I do the magnifying glass. But every now and then, I need that magnifying glass, and I can, I can swing it over here and look through it, and you know, get a little bit better look at what's going on. I use that magnifying glass. It, it comes up. More so when I'm doing a stitching type thing. Okay, we're going to put it back in there. Okay, here. run this out, make sure we get all the twist out. Okay, let's try this one more time. We're going to go through right here, and we'll come out right there, like I said. Go through on the back, come out in the front, and you just... You know, be mindful you don't get it twisted around those any of these cords you have hanging. Mindful of, mindful of these twists. But when you get up here close to the end, and you, before you pull it tight, make sure it's going to seat right down in that little groove we want it. All right? And when you get it there, all you got to do is kind of just give it a little tug. Don't, don't, just remember Tension consistent. Every time you pull one of these, you kind of want to pull you pull it the same. That way, they all look consistent down through there. But you see how that is? It just kind of gives a little bit of a detail right there. And that's it. That's all you're going to do. You're going to go. You're going to just wrap around and get to the end. I'll do a couple of these just to show you. But once you get going with this, it's pretty easy. See that? Bam. Bam. Run it through, pull it, make sure it ain't got no twist, make sure it's not done there. 
Kind of stick your finger. You see how I kind of got my my finger. Man, I want better lighting, better camera. I just I need to get me somebody who knows how to do this the camera and lighting stuff and say, hey, you need to buy this and set it up this way. Because I don't know. But I just lay my finger up there like that. That way when I go to pull it, it automatically boop, goes right into that groove where I want it. Put it up there. Just give it a little tug. Bam. You see? Now we're going to do the next one. Like I said, once you start doing this, it's not really... It's not, this one is not difficult at all, and it goes pretty fast. Because you're not having to wrap around this one, then over here. Then over here, you just do one side. All the way down. And it goes pretty quick. And you can do it. Once you start doing this, you'll kind of get into the, you know, the zone, the, gro the groove. You'll kind of get into it, and you'll just... And get a hold of it. <coughs> you see, I'm using my when I right where it is. I'm just kind of using my finger to guide it down in that groove. Boop, pull it, come back. Boop. And this piece of stitching is not is nowhere near as long as that maroon one. So, you know, it, you don't have a bunch of excess flipping and flopping. Now, yeah, it's going to get twisted, so you got to be mindful of your twist. I say it a thousand times. Be mindful of the twist. I feel like, what's his name? Ross? Was it Bob Ross? Was that his name? Happy Little Cloud. Mindful, be mindful of your twist. Uh oh, that was a little tight right there. I'll get it through there. Just give me a second. Yeah, see? Boop, there it is. But you see how it's doing. You see, and I'm almost halfway done. Just sitting here, I'm almost halfway done with it. Just run it through. That's all there is to this. It's not, this, this side stitch on this one. It, it, it's, it, it looks really good, and I'm going to show you something. Right here, let me show you this right now. Okay? Check this out. Okay. If you look at this, you probably, let's see, you probably see it a little bit better on this one. Just because here, let's close this thing up, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've said, I've mentioned this to somebody before. They were asking, they, this kind of come up in conversation. I pointed out something to him. That I don't think he, he, once I put it into words, he was like, oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, I got you. But I told him, when we're doing these bracelets, we're working in three dimensions. I may have mentioned this in a previous video, but we're working in three dimensions. The surface we're working with is not flat. It's got relief or depth, you know, bumps, high spots, low spots, right? And there are a few times where you can take advantage of it. And it causes an effect on the bracelet, which people, they see it. They may not, like I say, put it into words, explain it, but there's an effect. And, they, and you can see it. And it's it gives it this, you know, like I said, this added this added element because it brings out the depth or the relief, the three dimensions of the bracelet. Okay, I'm going to see if I can show you this. Okay, we see how this middle stitch, I can see it go all the way up and wrap around this, where it disappears, bending around the back side of the bracelet. Right, all the way down. Now the reason is, is because... Where that's sitting at is pretty much a flat surface, and it's at the very top. But these little grooves, they're grooves. So they're, this little black wraparound sits up here, and then that red drops down. 
then the black is raised up, okay? So when you look straight at it right here just at the front, you can see all those reds. But as you look up and around the it, you see how the red disappears? You can't see it, but you still see the black. But when you turn it, you can, the red comes into sight. It's because it's sitting down in that little groove, in that trench. And that kind of accentuates the fact that there's, this thing has depth. It has relief. See how down here, it did it once it starts wrapping around, the red disappears and you don't see it. But it's there. It's just this little added effect. And there are, there are a few occasions when you do one of these and you, you, you use the stitching to accentuate that fact. And it gives it this little added element. And most people, they never consciously notice it. Does that make sense? And, but when you, you now that you see what I'm talking about, See how it kind of just disappears. The red disappears. Uh, you only see it right here in this area right here. It, when you're looking straight on in the bracelet. Maybe somebody will get this reference. Maybe you won't. Up here it gets lost in a xenon mist. The last Starfighter reference. If you've ever seen that movie. Maybe you'll catch the reference. But it gets, it, you lose that red up here because it's, it's down in that groove. You only see it right here in the front when you're looking straight at the bracelet. If you look at it at an angle, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at it at an angle, you don't see it. Now you turn it to the side, you can see it all the way around. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. There are a few times when you're doing a bracelet and you can use the stitching to accentuate the fact that there's, there's a depth and relief to these bracelets. You know, they're not all flat on the surface. Um, I've got a tutorial for one. Let's see, I don't have it on my wrist. Where's, where's it at? I've got it sitting over here somewhere. Let me see. Where did I do it? I'll show you this. You can see it. Now, the bracelet I'm talking about is not stitched. Where's it? Here it is. Bracelet's not, it's not stitched. But it has this three-dimensional look to it, right? The front of it is pretty flat. But the sides of it, you see how you can kind of see up under there? It's got, like, here's the bracelet, and then these little semicircle pieces look like they're just laying on top of the bracelet. See, it's got a three-dimensional, there's some depth to it. But you look straight ahead, and you don't necessarily see it, but you look at the side, and you can see it. Right? But there are a few instances where the way the bracelet is woven or the way it's being stitched that it brings out the fact that you're not, it's not a flat surface you're looking at. Even on these bracelets, you're basic like a trilobite. It's pretty much flat. But if you stop and you look at it, you can see there's, a, there's little grooves in between every one of those things. Now, it's not much, but it's there. You see what I'm saying? So, um, that's just something I, I find interesting about this, working with paracord medium. There are instances where you can use that stitching. Right, check it out. You can, you can see it this way. You see all them gold. Okay, now when I start angling it down, you get to a point, all that gold disappears and you don't see it. But yet you still see that maroon, but that gold disappears. You don't see it anymore. Why? Because it's lost in the xenon mist, or it's down in that groove. You see what I'm saying? And I just, that's just, you know, it's just one of the things that people will notice. They may, they may not notice it consciously, but it's there. You see what I'm saying? Okay, well that's it, I know. I've, I've talked enough, um, but that's just, that's just really neat. I really like that. But I'm going to weave this out to the end, blah, 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 and I'm going to go ahead and do it, and I'm going to do the next one. The next one's the same way, but once I get all the way down here to this side on this gold stitch, I'll come back and I'll show you, you know, I'll tuck it up under it, I'll do my cut and burns and all that, and we'll have a finished product up to show you, okay? But that's it. You can do this one, you can do this one, you can do this one. It's not hard. most difficult thing of this is probably that offset working in because it's, you most likely, like me, I was like, 
Okay, this is, I can do this, it's just not the norm. So I wasn't used to it, right? And then this stitch in the middle, it can be, if you just take your time and be patient and pay attention to what you're doing, you can do it. And I promise you, the more you do it, not necessarily this exact stitch, but just stitching in general, the more you do it, the better at it you will get. Like I said, you stick that needle through there. And if you're, you're careful, you can feel the tactile feedback from the tip of the needle coming through the needle to where you're holding it. You can feel what you're doing inside there. It's little you're groping in the darkness you're like you're using you're, i'm gonna say this and I, I mean i mean no disrespect to this but this most people will be able to relate to this kind of thing it's like you see a blind person with the with the walking stick and they're they're tapping out in front of them and they know well, like they're walking and there's a, a, a drop in, in the surface they're walking on because of what they're, you see what I'm saying? It's the same principle as the, 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 the end of your needle when you go to put it through there. You can't see inside that knot, but yet you can feel up through your hand tactile feedback. You can feel what's going on in there and where to put it. And I know at first you're going to be like, ah, it feels like a bleh. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And eventually you will begin to, the stimulus you get from that tactile feedback, your brain will begin to identify and interpret what you're feeling. And it will make sense to you. That's the only way I know how to explain it. But like I say, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Right? So like I said, I'll leave it there. There's your scientific lesson, if you will, on how to stitch. Um, I'm going to stitch this one out, blah, 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 and I'm going to stitch this side out. Once I get down to the end, I'll come back and we'll finish the entire bracelet. But with that, I appreciate you watching. and Stick around. We'll finish this out. We're going to get this bracelet made today. Like I said, we're going to get this one made today. That way you'll have you a stitched modified sonic armor. Okay, I'm back. I got it stitched out. Look at that. Looks pretty good. I um let's zoom in a little bit. But you can see that. That one looks pretty good. I just got one more little wrap around to do right here. Alright. We'll get this thing finished. Okay, the way I'm gonna do this in let's see, that's the last wrap. Well, I'm gonna do right here. So I'm gonna come around this wrap and I'm gonna go up under this core strand. I'm gonna go up under it and then I'm gonna come out this side and I'm gonna run it back up under these two. See what I'm saying? I'm going to go up under that core strand. You don't have to do it that way. You can, you can do that wrap and go straight up under there. But I, the reason I'm doing it that way, so that it'll maintain this little wrap around, it'll maintain that same consistent angle as the rest of them. Because if I just come around and I try to go up under that loop right there, it might kind of cause it to sit funky. If that makes any sense. Now we're just going to run it up under here. With the rest of them. You see where the other gold one is. And I did the same thing with this gold too. Once I did that last wrap around. I went up under this core strand. And. You can see. I ran it through there. Just like the other. Just like the maroon. Just like the gold. Just like we're doing this gold. And we're eventually going to do this piece that way also. Get them all in that one spot. All right. Go ahead and cut this one off. Okay. Now, 
We're done with this needle. We can put it up. Oh yeah, that was on there a little tight. Uh, okay, put it in our little handy dandy holder. And get out one of our bigger ones. Put that on there. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run run one up under and then I'm going to run the other one up under. Then I'm going to cut and burn. And I've, I've said this before. You want those cuts and burns to be pretty much the very last thing you do. Alright, so remember in the beginning when I was talking about leaving this long enough, you'll see why right here. This is why. You want this piece of cord just a little bit longer than the length of whatever your fed is. Now, I know some feds are different lengths, whatever. That way I can fold this back over itself. And because if it's too short, you see, I'm just say, let's just say it was, it was shorter. I wouldn't be able to, because I'm trying to run it up under this knot. You see how I can't get it? Boop, I can get it. Now, granted, if for whatever reason, there are ways to get to do this other than that. Okay, but we're going to run this up under here. There's one. And there's two. We see that? Same place the rest of them went. See, now you know, now you understand why I did these first. Cause these three, they're, they're not very thick, so they don't take up a lot of room. You can get them through easily. Imagine if I had, you saw how I had to put a little pressure on it to get this one up on it. If I would have done this one first in the beginning, that means I would have had to come back three times and run a needle through there to get these in there. You see what I'm saying? Now granted, the needle's smaller, but I still would have had to mm, put some effort in there. It's easier to do these three first and then come back and do the thick one last. Right, now we got through there. Zoom me just a little bit. Got it through there. Now this this is always going to sit kind of funky right here. And I thought about, let's see, can I do it? Let me look at this. I don't know if I want to do it like that or not. I mean, I probably could, but I'm not going to. You see how it kind of, that piece right there, it just kind of, yeah. It'll work. You know what? Let's 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 try something here. Let's see. We're gonna pull this back out. We're gonna pull this out. I'm gonna try something. Out. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do? If you look close, like I said, this is this this little loop that goes around. How it wraps around right here and goes through, this is the end of it coming out. What I'm going to do, instead of coming out right here where it is, I'm going to go up under this. You see what I'm saying? That way, it's not going over that bump, and it'll be a little bit smoother. And then I can run it. Here, I'll show you. Just look at the way it is. You see where it's coming out right here? I'm going to run up under there, and then I'm going to run it through there. So when I fold it over, it's not gonna have this big this big bump right there. It's gonna hopefully lessen that out just a little bit. We're gonna see though. This is what I was talking about. When you go to end one of these things, you, you see how somebody else does it or whatever, but you always just look and you know, think about it and go, hmm, what's the best way to make this look you know, eat clean and tight? Even the back we're trying to you know, yeah, that'll work. Just pull pull it a little bit tighter to tighten up that little wrap right there. 
And now we can come back. You see? What I did there? I'm just going to go back up under it like I did before. Push it through, pull it through, got that, that doesn't have that big bump lump lot right there, okay, now we're going to pull it through, and I'm going to just leave, since I'm going to cut and burn it, this is just like, I'm not even going to try to cut it even shorter, I'm going to just leave it like it is, and uh, now we're going to do the other side. We'll spin it around to the other side. And this one, this is pretty straightforward because it's already coming out right there where it needs to be. And we're just going to run it through those two knots. Right. So we're going to attach our fit. I'm going to get it through there. Got it through there. I just gotta oh. there we go. You see how it's got a twist in it? Even here. Be mindful of the twist. You see how I'm, I'm rotating this cord as I pull it through and I don't get that twist out. Okay, and we're going to take a fit off here. We're going to get ready to do our cut and burns. Get all the stuff out of the way. Your smoothing tool, whatever you use as a smoothing tool, <coughs> get it at the ready. That way you're not having to find it while you have melted plastic over here getting hot again. Okay, so let's see. We'll do this top one first. And as always, when you do this, it has kind of tightened that up just a little bit. Where I've wrapped, where I've stuck all this cord up under these two wraps around, what it has done is pulled these little wraparounds right here a little tight. If you look, you can kind of see it, how it kind of, it, that one right there looks like it's, it's pushed in a little bit more than these others. Right? That's just the nature of it. So what you do is you try to flatten this out and get it to kind of go back straight it's not that noticeable but i notice it because i know that i i, I know that's what it does see it's not as, it's not quite as bad to the untrained eye they'll nobody will see it okay now we got all these so what we're going to do is we're going to get all these and we're going to try to get them all together because we're, oops, sorry, we're going to cut them all at once and we're going to burn them right here. But the thing is, okay, let's flip it over and look. Make sure everything on the front looks good before we do this. Like I always say, when you go to do this and you cut this, don't pick it up. Start flipping and flopping it around. Just leave it like it is. Don't manhandle it because you don't want anything to slip back up under there and not get burned. The reason I try to get them all together, like I, like I say, into one spot where I can burn them all at once. That way, even those micro cord pieces, it all forms, it melts, and all that plastic melts together. All that nylon or polyester is plastic, melts together into one hard lump. And they're all, con you know, you got three or four individual cords coming together, but the ends of them are all melted together. And what that does is keep over time, wearing the bracelet, it keeps it from sliding back up under there. Like if you, you, you simply have, you know, a piece of 550 or like one piece of micro cord and you burn the end of it and mash it, mash it, you know, smooth it out. Eventually over time, there is a chance that it can go back up under there, work itself back out. And you don't want that. Now, if they're all connected, less likely that it's going to happen that way. Okay, we'll get all this out of the way. Uh-oh.
All right, now, we're going to do this. I'm going to move my light so I'll be able to see. You can see, let's pull it back over here so you so you can see what i got going on here. got my piece of 550 and the three pieces of micro cord. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it like this, and I'm going to come at it with this flame like this. I'm going to just sit there and let it get hot, and let it get all molten, and I'm going to look, I'm going to watch while I'm doing this, and I'm going to watch them all kind of melt into one big melty molten glob. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to smooth it. Right? We do this. We try not to melt the bracelet. We're melting only the ends of these cords. Now, I know it happens that some of these weaves are, it's really difficult to melt just these little ends right here. But we try our best. Now they're getting all hot and melty. We come back. We'll just go whoosh, like that. And just kind of smooth it out around them edges. Because you don't want one of those hard teats, burrs, or sticking out. Because that's going to be on you know on your wrist, which is kind of a sensitive part of your body. And I, it'll cool off a minute. Just kind of run your finger across it. Make sure you don't have any hard spots. Feels good to me. Okay, now we're going to flip it around. We're going to do the same exact thing down here in the bottom. First off, we're going to get all our cords. We're going to try to get them all kind of orientated together right here. I'm going to pull them. Make sure you ain't got no slack in them or anything like that. Pull this one. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to look at the front side. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure everything is the way you want it. Because once you do this cut and burn, it, it's pretty hard to, you know, change the way the front of it looks. So now we got them all in, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here. Cut all those. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to hold it up here at an angle, and I'm going to just get the heat on it. Smooth them until they're ready. Uh oh, my lighter's about to die, it sounds like. Might need to put some fluid in it, that's alright. Okay, Alright, we're gonna come back, we're gonna smooth it out. Smooth it all down. Make sure it's. Yeah, that's smooth. Okay, we're gonna get all our stuff out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, you know, I'm making this one for myself, and I do this on camera just so you. Everybody can see this. You know, I do trial by fire. That's what I call it. Trial by fire. I made this to fit my wrist. And, uh, I'm going to put this thing on my wrist. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, this one, because of that center stitch, it's tightened it up a little bit. So, when I had my 7-inch wrist measurement, and then the add to, which, like I say, all the measurements are in the description. Look to that. The add to... To get, you know, you have your wrist measurement plus the add two equals the jig measurement, right? And I told you there are some bracelets that if you don't stitch it, the add two is this. But if you know you're going to stitch it, that stitching causes the sizing. It causes that bracelet to tighten up a little bit and it affects that add two number. Seven inches, add two, jig measurement. Seven inches plus the add two equals jig measurement. If you know you're going to stitch it, that, that add two's got to be slightly different. I've seen one bracelet that the stitching affects it by three quarters of an inch. You're like, what? Yep. This is a metamorphosis modified. If you come back and you stitch this thing, it draws this bracelet up so much and so tight, and the way it does it, it you have to. It affects the way you size it. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna stitch it, you size it one way. If you know you're gonna stitch it in that certain pattern, you have to, you have to size it up that much. Pretty amazing. First one I made, yeah, I learned the hard way that. And I was like. Right? And I went back and I did it and yep, it, I was right. It sizes, it's, it's about three quarters of an inch difference. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. But, with that said, what I'm going, where I'm going with all that 
Is this sin or stitch on this brush that causes this lesson to draw up? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I've measured this, whatever, and add to the jig measurement. So when I go to put this thing on my wrist, it's going to be a little tight. It will. I, I'm, I'm, I'm most likely it's going to be tight. It's going to be hard to get it on my arm. But I'll get it on there. Now, here's your tip. Here's your tip, trick, whatever. If you ever make a bracelet, whether it be for you or a customer or whatever, I've got this thing right here, right? Y'all have seen me use this thing. Solid piece of wood. Now, it's made for sizing metal bracelets. Like, you can put a piece of metal, like a metal bracelet on here, and you, can, and, you know, knock it with a hammer, and it'll, it'll stretch it out a little bit. But I've repurposed it. Come back. Put your measurements, six inches, eight inches, and what it's measuring is the circumference around it, right? Okay, this thing, or something similar, it doesn't necessarily have to be this, but something that's kind of tapers, like, for example, a hard plastic cup, right? Um, You do not use a, 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 a cup made out of glass, not a good idea, because the glass could shatter when I tell you what I'm going to show you. Um, but you use a cup or, you know, something. Now, make sure it's got some rigidity to it. It's not going to collapse when you put pressure on it. But what you can do, if, if if that bracelet, for whatever reason, is a little snug, snugger than you might like, or it, it's not quite, whatever, you can take that bracelet. Let's see. It may not work with this one. I may not be able to get it around this cup. Nah, it's not going to go around that cup very well. But you can take it and put it down on there. You see what I'm saying? That's right at the 7-inch mark, which is my wrist, right? But you can take it and you can kind of... Now, if you've got... I'm going to tell you if, you, if you've got a plastic buckle back here and you start doing this, that plastic buckle, not necessarily going to break, it's just going to fail and it's going to pop open depending on how hard you press down on this. But, you see what I'm saying? There are some braces you make, even though you've sized them perfectly, when you go to put them on, they'll be a little snug. You just put it on something, cup, this, that, whatever. Like I say, don't use a glass made out of glass, because it may shatter if you do this. But you put it on here, and you just kind of push it downward, and that tapering will stretch it out just a little bit. See, there's the seven inch mark. You see how much I got past that? And you can just let it sit there. And it, it will, it'll stretch it out. What it does, what it, what it's doing actually, is it's causing all those cords that are even interwoven together. Even though, me, I pull them real tight and all this kind of stuff, they're pulled tight in a, in a way that was for the weave. Now we want to wear it. So, if we put it on something like this and we push it down, it forces everything to, it's, it's not really so much stretching the cord, it's just getting all those cords to be pulled and it causes them to not, I, I don't know how to say it. I, I don't know the term I'm looking for, but it, it's not that it stretches the cord, it just gets them to all lay in there and orientate themselves in such a way that it, it opens that bracelet up just a little bit. Does that make sense? Now, with that said, we're going to see if this one's going to go on my arm. Because like I say, this one, it can be, even though I've sized it right and all that, it might it might be a little, a little tight. I'll be able to get it on my wrist, but when I get it on there, I'm going to be like, ooh, that was a little tight. I'll, so I'll put it on here and it's kind of stretch. Right, we'll go ahead and we go ahead and get it round so it'll be easy to get on my wrist. All right, I'm going to do this right here on camera like I always do. And these buckles, sometimes that can be, especially on a brand new bracelet. Brand new buckle, brand new bracelet. Sometimes they're not the easiest thing to get to clasp. Especially if you're not, you know, I know me, normally I would hold this up against my chest and use my chest as, as a third hand, if you will, a second hand because I've only got one. Yeah, there we go. No, no, no. That one fits good. That one fits real good. Just kind of get the tip of your finger up under there. You see, there's no, there's no, there's no slack up under there. I might stretch that one out just a little bit to have it just a little bit looser. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Look at that. 
a stitched modified sonic armor. Olive drab, maroon, and gold. That's a good looking bracelet right there. But we're gonna take this one off. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put it up here on this thing. Let's see what I measure what it measures out at. Right at seven inches. Just a little bit. See what I'm saying? Just a little bit shy of that seven inch mark. Right? Hence why it's a little snug. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put it over here. Just kind of work it down just a little bit. Not much. Just slide it down and it's gonna kinda it's gonna cause all them cords to seat into position so that it's gonna be the measurement we want. Right? But there you go. That's how I make a like I said, a stitched modified sonic armor. And again, let's give credit to see this five fifty for this. But thanks for watching. Give us a like. Give us a share. Um, leave a comment below. Comment what you think about this bracelet. What kind of stuff would you like to see me do? And I, I'll say this. I don't work with shackles very much. I, I, I just don't like them. They're not very practical. I, I make bracelets that are practical to wear. Not these big, thick, wide things. I mean, I've made a few of those, but I don't normally do that because most people don't actually wear those things. They're, those are display models. You know, things that people every day wear. Something like that. It's, it's not too thick. It's not too wide. It's a, it's a good everyday carry. Everyday wear, if you will. All right? But leave some comments below. What, what would you like to see me do? But... With that, I'll finish this one like I finish them all. Remember, keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.